Hello campers and bushcrafters, I'm Donnie Pavlini with Donnie Pavlini Outdoors and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the, the wax myrtle plant here. Uh, or southern bayberry or uh, uh, the candle plant. Uh, what we're going to try to do today is we're going to try to separate the wax that comes off of these berries and uh, try to make us uh, some candles in the old way that it used to be done. So I hope you find it interesting. One interesting thing about the wax myrtle plant is it's excellent for using the leaves. Let's take the leaves, crush them really good, and just rub them all over you. Now what you have right now is an insect repellent it's really hard to beat. Free of charge from Mother Nature. Now what I want to do, I brought this little trash bag, is I want to be able to pick some berries. So, and I want to just pull the berries off the tree, or bush rather, put them in the bag. I'm not trying to break the limbs. I don't really want to molest the plant that much. These berries are a food source for birds. It has a antibiotic quality to it. And it's going to take a lot of berries to get enough wax to make one candle, that's for sure. The berries can only be taken off of the female in this species of plant. After 30 minutes of picking, this is what we got. And that's not really a whole lot. The chemical in this plant is also a very good anti-diarrheal. So it's sort of the kaopectate of the woods. Alright guys, to get this going, I need to make a small cooking fire. Because what I want to do is I want to hang my billy can on top of my cooking stob contraption and uh, get this wax melted off of these berries. Doesn't take a huge fire. Oftentimes people build fires way too bigger than they actually need for the purpose. A little flash tender there. Got my coffee can billy can here. I'm going to put in a good supply of berries. I don't know if you can see that. Now, from here, I'm going to add some water. Get that leaf out of there. You want to put your water in the can. Wow, some of these are floating. Um, a good supply of water in there. Nothing crazy. You can see these berries will start settling in a minute. And put this on the fire, bring it to a boil. If you're just joining this channel, or the first time you've been on this channel, this is what I call my cooking stob. It's just a series of seven notches on, uh, on a, a steak. And you just uh, tie your paracord up that way, put a notch on the top, notch at the end of the stick for the pot hanger, and there you go. And it's adjustable. Alright, we've got the beginning of our boil 
as you can see um, it's changed from the color in there it has changed from the berry color to a darker color and it's really coming on now I'm gonna have to watch this uh, an interesting note from what I understand the Choctaw Indians or Native Americans however you want to put it used to boil just like this and then use the pot liquor the water and the plant material they used to use that to treat dysentery which must have been uh, common at that time and what's going to happen from here is the wax will begin to collect at the top of the water and we're going to skim that off and uh, use that to make our candles it's got a slow boil here I'm going to move this off the fire for a minute I'm going to slip in this improvised ladle try to skim off some of this wax probably isn't the best choice of something to use to get this wax but that's what we're going to use today here's our first collection of wax and we're gonna get the rest of it boiling and uh, we're gonna see if we can scrape some of this off I want you to take a look at this this what we have is the wax see if we can make it release you can see these little shards of wax here and that's what we want that's what we're looking for these candles were highly prized and they're some people refer to the bayberry candle as the Christmas candle because of its aroma and it candles last a long time they burn pretty long so we're going to get all this collected we're going to get another collection out of the, the billy can and then we'll melt this with some beeswax for our little bushcraft candle project and every candle's got to have a wick right what I've decided to do is use a piece of jute twine and I'm just going to set this little container here and get this melting. And as it melts, take it off the fire. I'm going to soak this in this little piece, soak this little piece of jute twine in that wax. blowing on it, letting it cool, and keeping it taut. That's the main thing. Now, here's my wick. I'm just setting this directly onto the fire. I'm going to bend that to use it for a spout. The vessel that I'm going to use is going to be this little piece of pottery that I did. So I want to keep it authentic, and the, and the game plan is for me to put it in like that, pour the wax on, let it set cool a little bit. All right, moment of truth time. Hey, that ain't too bad. It's more than I thought it would make. put some water into here and I'm going to set the whole thing in here 
and here's the candle in its little water bath cooling the wick standing straight up all right it's time to test her out I'm using the wick that I trimmed off And down here are the fruits from the wax myrtle plant. Oh, it smells good. Really does. It smells really good. It doesn't produce a lot of smoke at all. guys and gals there she is and work very well I have such a good time whenever I'm learning something new no I've never done it before obviously and uh, but the process is pretty straightforward what would I do differently next time next time I'd want a larger pan and a better skimming device obviously uh, Everything else went pretty good. The wax myrtle plant, as I said before, leaves very good insect repellent. Not as good as beautyberry, but still, they work pretty well. And, uh, of course, here we go. The wax. This season is the Christmas season, so it's appropriate that we make what the colonists used to call the Christmas candle. And uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me and putting up with me for this little project. And we'll try to bring you some more like this. We're going to revisit pottery and we're going to do some firing and things like that. I'm hoping to make ash glazes to uh, make pots shine and so forth. So I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate your likes, comments, and subscriptions. From Donnie Pavlini Outdoors to you and yours, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in the woods. Take care.